Selena Quintanilla was born in 1971 in Lake Jackson, Texas, and she was performing Tejano music with her Mexican-American family around the state at a very young age. By her teens, she was on the rise to stardom, and soon her music was hitting the charts. Selena Quintanilla is sometimes called the Queen of Tejano. Selena's music expanded the audience for the Texan Mexican music and contributed to a rise in Latin music popularity across the United States. Selena's album, Selena Live, won a Grammy Award in 1994, making her the first Tejano artist to win a Grammy. But on March 31st, 1995, Selena was killed by a woman who was the ex-president of her fan club, the former business manager of her boutique. A final album was released in the month after her death, Dreaming of You, and she became the first music artist to have five Spanish albums simultaneously on the Billboard 200s list. Now, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Down the Rabbit Hole News. I am the rabbit. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, what I wanted to do today is really get into the nitty gritty details of the series, the allegations that they're making, and also really dispelling some of that information. The recent docuseries, Selena and Yolanda, The Secrets Between Them, has caused such social media controversy. Yolanda Saldivar is getting her own Fucking show? Pinche Yolanda, los yeah. pinches huevos, wey. Low key though, like, I'm interested to what this bitch has to say. I think Yolanda is telling the truth. What if Yolanda was really like a uh, punching bag? Mm. So, you know, what if she really was a good person and it just, you know, I mean, I, I, you gotta, you gotta be realist, a realist too. Uh, yeah. You gotta see that, that there's a truth behind everything. Like, it don't matter what it is. And I don't believe in coincidences. Social media controversy. So I wanted to make sure that we broke that down a little bit more. I created a playlist linked in the description box for your review on the topic. There's other videos in there. Check them out. And some of those videos are while I'm live. This is a pre-recorded. The recent docu-series, Yolanda's family, Tina, Veronica, and Ernesto, sit around the table using Elida's storage files, which Tina says it's her legacy. This is not a simple case of murder. This is what this proves wasn't a person that just said, hey, I, I want to get rid of you. And I'm, Correct. Yes. My Aunt Elida spent the majority of her life just gathering anything and everything that she could so that she could put together the pieces of this puzzle to tell Yolanda's story. This is her legacy, and this is what she's did all her life, gather all the information that nobody else wanted to gather. My mom wasn't one who wasn't afraid to, to put her face out there, to defend her baby sister, to show the world that she's not like what they say, that she's a monster, because she's not. Now, in this video, I'm going to go detail by detail and take us back to 1995 and various years that followed to show interviews that Irlanda and her family had already done. I want to also highlight the intentional omissions from the docu-series to rewrite the narrative that Selena's murder was an accident. This video is truly intended to point out some of the inconsistencies, not only with the current docu-series, but also throughout the case, throughout the time, throughout the time that Yolanda has been speaking out since her conviction. Let's start with the first clip. Why the Saldiva family is not credible. Like Tina Armillo said, this was Maria Elida's legacy. Maya Elida spent the majority of her life just gathering anything and everything that she could so that she could put together the pieces of this puzzle to tell Yolanda's story. This is her legacy. And Maria Laida Saldivar did an interview in the early 2000s to discuss a love affair that Selena was having with Dr. Ricardo Martinez. In this interview, Elida shares the information with the reporter that Yolanda had shared with her about a hidden camera that Selena had found during one of the encounters with Dr. Martinez. In this clip, Elida confirms that Dr. Ricardo Martinez 
was recording this sexual encounter with Selena. The reporter asked Elida, how did Yolanda get a hold of these recordings? Elida believed that Selena and Yolanda obtained them and hid them weeks before the murder of Selena. Ella nos dijo que este andaba, iba a dar un baño. Cuando agarró una toalla, algo se, le, se movió y entonces ella se fijó que era, y era una cámara. ¿Una cámara escondida? Una cámara escondida. ¿Quedaba hacia dónde? Al cuarto de la cámara. ¿Del doctor Martínez? Ahí se quedaba el doctor Martínez. Y la intención era grabar al doctor Martínez y a Selena teniendo relaciones sexuales, ¿cierto? Pues eso es lo que dice la carta, que eso es lo que estaba haciendo él, que eso es lo que hizo. ¿Quién le entregó estos videos a Yolanda? ¿O cómo los, cómo los obtuvo ella? Pues yo creo que ella los agarró y lo le dijo a Salina lo que iba a encontrar en el apartamento. Y si no estoy eh, en error, este parece que dijo Yolanda que unas semanas antes de que pasara la trajera, uh, ella y Salina los vieron. ¿A cuál es caja? Una caja que usted ha referido no se encuentra aquí, está en Ciudad de México o está en México y esa caja vendría a, vis, a vislumbrar oh, ese, un panorama ese, ese, diferente. Ese, 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 pues, ¿Qué es esa caja de seguridad? ¿Es una caja de seguridad? Sí, eh, es, es, son unas cosas que yo, que, que ella a mí me... ¿Ella usted le dio? Sí. Me ¿Qué dio, es lo que eh, tiene esa caja de seguridad? Te, te, tienen documentos, uh, videos, cartas, recibos que enseñan mi, mi inocencia. ¿Y dónde está esa caja? Pues eso no lo voy a decir a usted, porque... Es, eh, <ríe> ¿Pero eso, por qué nunca ha venido a corte esa caja? ¿Por qué? Por, por eso estoy peleando en la corte ahorita, pues está mi pelación pendiente. ¿Pero nueve años? Eh, eso se dice de lo, la corte del de estado de Texas. <ríe> Yo todo lo que sé que, pues, si existen, tan, que sé que hicieron acá tal en un banco, pero no sé en dónde. Sé que manda un pago ya cada mes, pero no puede decirle en qué banco están. Es decir, esos videos están resguardados para evitar que alguien los tome o, sí, ajá, o que... se metan aquí a su casa. Exacto, exacto, exactamente. In 1998, Yolanda did another interview where she claimed to have discovered videos weeks before before Selena's murder. Yolanda claims that two weeks prior to the murder, she discovered videotapes damaging to Selena's career, and that she had a diary of Selena's that corroborated information on the tapes. In his purported letter, Lorenzo Salinas claims he was hired to beat up Yolanda to retrieve the tapes and diary as part of a plot to extort Selena. Yolanda claims she was attacked, but managed to get away. Now, remember this name right here, Lorenzo Salinas? Please remember that name because it's very important as it's brought up in the docuseries. Again, the Salivar family mentioned this name. Keep that in mind. Oh, that is very interesting. That's a letter that she got in prison. From is this Lorenzo? Yes. I think it is Lorenzo. This is Lorenzo. The letter that Yolanda received was from Lorenzo Salinas, who was Dr. Martinez's um, personal chauffeur. Going back to the series, a safe box videos are not mentioned once, not in part one, not in part two, but they're definitely mentioned in these video interviews that Yolanda did with Eleda. The woman who's been holding all of these documents and that this was her legacy. This is how she was going to defend her baby sister. Yolanda shared with the reporter that there is a safe box. This safe box was located in Monterrey, Mexico. Yolanda said that the safe box contained documents, receipts, letters, videos that she had received from Selena. All of this would demonstrate her innocence. Elida said, I know they exist, but they are in a bank. But I don't know the names. I know Yolanda sends payments every month, but Yolanda can't say what bank it is at. The reporter then says, so these videos are stored to avoid people stealing them? Eleida confirms. Yes, Yolanda confirms in 1998 that all this information remains stashed in Monterrey, Mexico. Now, did you guys know that an attorney that the Saldivar family had hired was hoping that all of this information that Yolanda was saying existed would actually be helpful to Yolanda and, you know, hopefully would help her at a second trial or a reduced sentence. You know where those tapes are now? Exactly. You know where that diary is now? I know where they're at. Yolanda contends they remain where she stashed them in a safe deposit box in Monterey, Mexico. Why is that information significant to the death of Selena Quintanilla? Because that is 
many of the things that were discussed that day. It was not about the embezzlement. It was not about no upset fan or being fired. It had nothing to do with that. San Antonio attorney Ramiro Estrada has been retained by the Saldivar family. He says while the information in Mexico may not exonerate Yolanda, it will somehow shed light on her state of mind in the days leading up to the murder. Estrada hopes the alleged evidence will open the door for a second trial and a reduced sentence. I think Yolanda knows that she needs this information to be found. Yolanda empowered Estrada to retrieve the supposed evidence and behind the music accompanied him to Monterey, Mexico. Isn't there a chance, maybe even a pretty good chance, that Yolanda's lying to us about this evidence? Well, I think anything's possible, but it would, see, it would serve no purpose. It would not help her to be, to be perpetrating a lie. Yolanda and the Saldivar family directed Estrada to more than a half dozen different bank locations. I don't see what good it would do for her to be sending this on a, on a wild goose chase. I mean, it's not, certainly not going to help her in a trial. But a wild goose chase it proved to be. There was no safe deposit box, no tape, no diary, no evidence. You're disappointed that this evidence hasn't been found? Sure. Sure I am. Following the trip, Estrada revealed he intends to remove himself from Yolanda's case. Now here's my question. If the Saldivar family is using Elena's information that she's been holding on to, where is the secret box? Why wasn't the secret safe box mentioned? Why wasn't the family talking about the fact that they had retained an attorney who went to Mexico looking for all this information that could potentially reduce Yolanda Saldivar's sentence, exonerates Yolanda Saldivar, or at least prove her innocence? Why wasn't any of this mentioned in this 2024 series? Elena confirmed in this Spanish interview that Yolanda was sending payments, monthly payments, to sustain a security box in Mexico. But did Tina Armillo or the Saldivar family show that in episode one or two? No. Now, who in their right mind would sit in prison for nearly 30 years having information that could release them, exonerate them, reduce their sentence? This isn't the life of David Gale. Yolanda is not David Gale. How credible is Aleda and her legacy? How credible is the information that you are now receiving from Tina Armillo and the Saldivar family? There were several allegations that Yolanda Saldivar made and has made throughout the years. One of the allegations that Yolanda Saldivar made on the nine-hour standoff with police was that Abraham Quintanilla had raped her. Now, that specific allegation wasn't discussed in part one or part two of the series, which I think it's a bit unfortunate and very important piece of information to share. Why did Yolanda and family not share this information? To further support that this allegation was made, uh, the Washington Post in 1995 wrote an article while the trial was going on. They wrote, on the tape, Saldivar at times hysterical blamed the shooting on the singer's father, Abraham Quintanilla Jr., who she said raped and sexually abused her and threatened to kill her family if she told anyone on the attack. The alleged assault occurred a month and a half earlier in her apartment, she said. She said, he made me shoot. He made me shoot her. Her father is responsible for this. She talked about the father coming between us. They say Saldivar inflicted even more pain beyond Selena's senseless murder. Not only did she do that, but then she tried in public to destroy our family accusations of my false accusations about my dad about our family these guys that are over there talking about it you know and they come up and they tell you things and you, it really pisses you off because they're not telling the truth i uh was very uncomfortable with all the the lies and all the false accus accusations against me uh, of course that bothered me but uh i think uh that at the end the, the truth is going to come out. The truth is the truth. After the trial was over, this clip shows how hurt the family was hearing these types of allegations that Yolanda Saldivar had made during the nine-hour standoff. And Abraham Quintanilla was questioned about these uh, allegations from Yolanda on the stand and privately with the district attorney. The district attorney wrote a book that I definitely would recommend if you want to get in detail in which is a lot of where I'm pulling some of this information from. Justice for Selena, The State versus Yolanda Sandiva, and it was written by Carlos, Carlos Valdez. Now, this book is not available on Audibles, which is unfortunate because it is a very heavy read, easy read. He goes into the uh, different details of the law, would recommend it if you're wanting to understand a little bit of what happened in 1995 and how this case 
was happening in court. But what I thought was very interesting um, that Carlos Valdez wrote, the DA that tried this case, was the fact that he had pointed out the various allegations that Yolanda Saldivar had made about being either assaulted, sexually assaulted, raped, and whatnot at different times. It was almost as if she would use rape to try to avoid any type of accountability or repercussions or confrontation with the family. This is what was written in the book, and I just wanted to point that out. And I thought that was interesting that he pointed that out because in the series, part one and two, a rape is never mentioned. Abraham Quintanilla raping Yolanda is never mentioned. Matter of fact, the family, Tina Armillo and the Saldivar family never really go into detail about any type of rape. They said that she was assaulted. Yolanda had gone back to Mexico on a business trip. She felt so uncomfortable that she took her older sister with her. And on the way back, they stopped at a Whataburger, I believe it was, and um, Yolanda went in to get some food. It was around 8 o'clock in the morning, so I went in there, and I ordered, and uh, what it was been ordered, I went to the bathroom, and I was washing my hands. So these men, I, I had no idea who they were, just started pushing me against the mirror. I said, what, what do y'all want? And just one of them just hit me right here and, and, and pushed me around, and, and I, I, I almost fell. I didn't know what they were after. I did not know, you know, if they were gonna kill me or, or, or they were gonna take me. You know, all those things were coming to my mind. And I guess somebody heard that it was rambling inside the, the restroom and I was yelling that they ran out. And so, oh my God, I started feeling shaky and I, I didn't know what was happening. And so I left, I didn't even pick up the, the, the stuff. And I got in the car and I just told my sister, let's go, we have to go, we have to go. And she said, what happened? And I said, I said, I just, I just, I just got assaulted. We, we just have to go. We just have to go. For many years, there was no proof this assault happened. You had to take Yolanda at her word. But then there was a letter that popped up. I'm trying to remember who this was from. Oh, that is very interesting. That's a letter that she got in prison from... Is this Lorenzo? Yes. I think it is Lorenzo. This is Lorenzo. The letter that Yolanda received was from Lorenzo Salinas who was Dr. Martinez's um, personal chauffeur, indicating that attack did happen. And it was the doctor who ordered it. Oh yeah, so he says right here, él me dijo que tú ibas a venir a Monterrey la semana del 31 de marzo. Él dijo que ocupara a unos hombres para que te asaltaran, para que tú no sus sospecharas nada. And so that's what she's been saying all along, like somebody beat me up. To this day, people don't believe that she was attacked, or people say that, that she made it up. Although this guy is saying, I'm the one who hired those guys. So it yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah. Using, and they use Lorenzo Salinas' letter as a means to show how the doctor could have set this up. Potentially, even Abraham Quintanilla, they lead people to believe that, but don't really have any information to substantiate that. Now, let's get back to this Lorenzo Salinas letter, because Tina Armillo and the Saldivar family are given so much weight to this letter that they couldn't really find out who actually sent it. Uh, allegedly, in 1998, Yolanda told a reporter that Lorenzo Salinas was somebody that she and Selena met in Mexico and that he censors this letter and they can't even locate this guy. But apparently in this letter, it says that the assault that happened to Yolanda was essentially a hit set by the doctor. Questions is understandable. But then as the interview continues, she jumps at an opportunity to supposedly tell all. This is a letter that your family has said you received here in prison, is it? Mm -hmm. Behind the music was given two letters by the Saldivar family prior to this interview. They are allegedly from a man named Lorenzo Salinas, who Yolanda says she and Selena met while doing business in Mexico in early 95. The Texas Department of Corrections confirms the letters were mailed from outside the prison. But during an exhaustive seven-month investigation, Behind the Music was unable to find Lorenzo Salinas or confirm his existence. He tells me exactly what I've been saying all along. Which is what? That... He feels his conscience is killing him because he knows the truth and he knows that he feels that, or he thinks that I have things that 
will eventually say it all. Listen, we've been waiting for that eventually for quite some time. And Do you? Yes. Yolanda claims that two weeks prior to the murder, she discovered videotapes damaging to Selena's career, and that she had a diary of Selena's that corroborated information on the tapes. In his purported letter, Lorenzo Salinas claims he was hired to beat up Yolanda to retrieve the tapes and diary as part of a plot to extort Selena. Yolanda claims she was attacked, but managed to get away. You know where those tapes are now? Exactly. You know where that diary is now? I know where that. Also, another point to make, while Yolanda is recounting these details about the assault, um, about what happened the morning, um, and as she's giving her statement to police, she talked about the fact that she was asleep and she was awoken by Selena. She doesn't talk about the fact that she w she called Selena, that Selena took her to the emergency room, that there was multiple medical professionals that testified to the fact that she didn't look like she had been sexually assaulted. There was no evidence of that looking at her. Uh, none of that gave that. There was markings that were shown in the docuseries, but nothing of a sexual nature. When Selena took Yolanda Salivar to the hospital, she was examined by two nurses. And she's saying, oh yes, these two big men beat me up. And the nurses, you know, look at her body and we, we have the pictures from her arrest. Then she's got these like brown spots and almost like bruises that were healing. They're like maybe a scratch or two. And the nurses told me that Selena was just sitting there looking with her arms crossed shaking her head like this is not matching what she told me it was just not believable i mean the light bulb went off and explained the said i'm sure they say that she lied about being assaulted but i've seen the letter that states the attack did actually happen nothing of a sexual assault had been shown in part one and two so you kind of have to wonder like how do you bypass that information when you all have put this out there for people to take on. It doesn't quite make sense. And let me read a little part of Attorney Valdez's book. He says, one of the district attorneys that was assisting him did the cross-examination of Ms. Biggs. Ms. Patricia Biggs is a registered nurse who, was who at the time was employed by a regional hospital. She was a certified sexual assault nurse examiner. She says that that on March 31st, 1995, Miss Biggs had encountered Yolanda Saldivar on the day. Miss Biggs told the jury that on the particular day she was on duty at the hospital into the emergency room accompanied by Selena. Selena did most of the initial talking. Selena explained that Saldivar had been raped the day before, Thursday, March 30th, in Mexico. Miss Big said that at first, Saldivar didn't say anything, just kept looking down on the floor. It seemed that Saldivar was not happy about, about whatever had happened. Miss Big said she asked Saldivar, were you raped? Saldivar responded by saying very abruptly while still looking at the floor, yes, I was. When asked to explain how or where the rape had occurred, Saldivar explained that she was raped at about one o'clock the day before in Mexico. She was raped by two men who also assaulted her and threw her out of her car, leaving her abandoned by the side of the road. Saldivar told Miss Biggs that she had some pain around her neck area and had some vaginal bleeding. Those were the only two physical complaints that Saldivar made. Her vital signs were checked. They didn't find anything unusual. The medical examiners checked around the neck and didn't find any physical or signs of injury. This is what Patricia Biggs, registered nurse, said. I didn't see any evidence to indicate that she had been raped. No, sign, no signs of rape whatsoever. Now, attorney Carlos Valdez makes a point to say in his book, it would have been interesting to see how Saldivar would explain her actions on the 30th of March, the day before the shooting. Saldivar had told Miss Biggs the rape had occurred on Thursday, March 30th at about 1 p.m. While she was still in Mexico, she had said that she was raped, assaulted, and left abandoned by the side of the road. According to Blanca Padilla, another witness to the case, so Blanca Padilla was the days in front desk person. She was actually the one that helped Yolanda Saldivar check in into the hotel at days in. 
According to Blanca Padilla, Saldivar had appeared at the Days Inn Hotel between 7.30 and 8.30 p.m. That evening, asking for a room. Saldivar would have had to find someone to pick her up by the side of the road, take her back into the nearest Mexican town, and leave her somewhere where she would have access to a rental car. Using the credit card or money that the rapist had not taken from her, she would have to find some type of transportation to San Antonio. She had to drive from somewhere in Mexico to her house in San Antonio, normally a four to five hour drive depending on the delay at the border. And while in San Antonio, borrow her nephew's red pickup truck. She would next have to drive to Corpus Christi, another two and a half hour drive in time to check into the hotel between 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. If she had driven the whole way at 100 miles per hour and not had any delays or problems at the border, she had never stopped for anything, not even a restroom break. She still would have difficulty in fitting into the tight timeline. Maybe it was possible that she had gotten every single break imaginable along the way, and she had really done what she says she had. But again, maybe she lied. And that is where the timeline is very important. In the in the Washington Post article, it said that she alleged in the recording that she had been raped a month before by Abraham Quintanilla, right? And so now in this event, she had been raped in Mexico by men left on the side of the road. Now, to play the devil's advocate a little bit, just a little bit. One of the things that Carlos Valdez did was to post the doctor, Ricardo Martinez. If you guys remember, this is the man that people are alleging um, had an affair with Selena. He came out years later and... Realmente porque existió un amor este que no te puedes, no lo puedes decir con, con palabras a veces, sino que a pesar de que fue muy corto, hubo una entrega completa. Yo estaba dispuesto en ese momento a tener un cambio de vida por ella, sí. Sí, sí, definitivo. Y no me arrepiento, ¿eh? No. I guess confirm the rumor uh, to a news station, to Univision Primer Impacto. In my opinion, I think he was paid for that information. That's how it got, they got that information. But nothing was shown to substantiate such a fair. But let's talk about this deposition that Douglas Tinker, Yolanda Saldivar's defense, attorney and team wanted for Dr. Ricardo Martinez to do. There was a position that they were pushing for. There was information that the defense team felt Ricardo Martinez had for this case. Let's talk about it. Ricardo Martinez is in Mexico. They were able to secure a over-the-phone deposition to get his statement. Okay. Dr. Martinez testified that he met Abraham Quintanilla, Selena's father, who had expressed his disapproval of Selena's business venture. Selena's financial situation. On one occasion, Selena had experienced a cash flow problem created by money not being transferred from a bank in the U.S. to her account in Mexico. The doctor said he had stepped in and advanced Selena some money to pay off some pending obligations. The money was subsequently repaid. We knew that on the day before the murder, Selena had told Saldivar, who was still in Monterrey, to take all of the financial records to Dr. Martinez's office. Selena had already made arrangements with Dr. Martinez to have the records shipped to Corpus Christi so Selena could give them to her accountant. I wanted to ask the doctor about this particular incident. And that is when Attorney Valdez's question comes in. So interesting. The doctor was trusted enough when he says that he was her financial advisor. I mean, at some point, according to the doctor, he lent her some money because she was having a cash flow issue from the U.S. to Mexico. And apparently, Selena trusted the doctor enough to have her financial records sent to him. And let's be very clear. In the deposition, no affair is discussed. Dr. Martinez doesn't say anything about an affair. If anything, he really places himself as somebody of a trusted person who had a friendly relationship with her. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And again, you can find some of this in this book. Attorney Valdez question. She was supposed to take some bank papers to your office. Is that right? Dr. Ricardo Martinez answers yes. And she called to tell you that she had been kidnapped? 
Dr. Ricardo Martinez answers, yes. She called my office to tell me, yes, she did. Attorney Valdez, did she say anything about being raped that day? Dr. Ricardo Martinez answers, raped? Yes. Also, Attorney Valdez, what did she say? Do you know? Dr. Ricardo Martinez answers, what she told my secretary was that she had been kidnapped and that she had been raped and she had been abandoned in a highway. She didn't know where she was. Attorney Valdez questions, doctor, did you believe that she had been kidnapped and raped? Dr. Ricardo Martinez answers, no. Attorney Valdez, why not? Ric Dr. Ricardo Martinez answers, because it sounded very strange to me, the fact that she had not delivered the papers and then calls me and tells me that all that had happened, aside from that, how come she had a cellular phone in her hand? They wouldn't, they wouldn't have left her with a phone. Attorney Valdez questions, did you ever get the papers that she was supposed to deliver to your office? No. So Selena tells Yolanda, leave these papers with Dr. Martinez. Timeline-wise, as Attorney Valdez pointed out in his book, it wouldn't have made sense. Um, and not only that, was she carrying this gun in Mexico to the United States? How did she cross the border that way? Or where would she store the gun if she was going to and from? I don't think you could bring weapons that way, but just an observation. Now, another nurse by the name of Carla Anthony was also working at the hospital around the time that all of this went about. Yolanda Saldivar said that she had been assaulted and raped by two men in Mexico. This is what another medical professional, registered nurse, heard her say. They did complete an examination. An examination was conducted, including a vaginal exam, in efforts to find signs of injury to document for law enforcement purposes. Ms. Anthony noted also that Saldivar appeared to be depressed or sad about something during the physical examination. No signs of injuries or of any kind could be detected. However, Ms. Anthony, Ms. Carla Anthony, did know some red marks on Saldivar's neck, but they weren't either scratches or cuts, not even abrasions. They were just red marks, which didn't seem serious enough to require treatment. She had said, Yolanda Saldivar had said that the assault and rape had occurred on road between Monterrey and Matamoros at about 1.30 the day before. The two men had raped her, hit her several times on the neck and stomach with a baseball bat and taken her car, leaving her abandoned by the side of the road. Neither the doctor nor Miss Anthony found anything closely resembling to that type of injury that Saldivar would have received if she was telling the truth about the assault and rape. Even though Saldivar was quietly moaning and groaning as if it, as if it pained her to make any type of movement, there was no physical evidence of any type of assault. Now, while the examination and everything was going on, Selena happened to be standing behind Saldiva. Selena would quietly touch Miss Anthony's arm and shake her head from side to side as to indicate that Saldiva had told Selena a different story than the one she was telling now. From what Carla Anthony said, um, Selena wasn't believing anything that Yolanda was saying at this point. And her clothing had no sign of bleeding. If she was telling the truth, surely she would have had some drop of evidence of blood on her clothes. There wasn't any, not even one drop. During the trial with the medical examiners, there was also a discussion about cuts, uh, like slits on Yolanda Saldivar's clothing that she was wearing, almost like she had cut it herself specifically to make it look like it had been cut through by somebody. Uh, but they, they weren't any tears to her clothing. We could see some of these pictures here. Tina Armillo and the Saldivar family is using this letter from Lorenzo Salinas to basically uh, show that there was some level of truth to Yolanda being assaulted. Yolanda's sister. All right, guys, that was part one of the first breakdown. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about part one. We still have to get into other parts, the embezzlement, the other allegations that were made, we need to talk about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you feel like the Saldivar family is credible? Let me know.